Alright, I'm Craig Poxton, uh, I'm trained by Matt Smith for Ultimate Boxing. <coughs> My brother used to box years ago, and uh, I remember my earliest memory of boxing, I, I was only little, I found his head guard. I was only about two or three years old, four year old. And all there we were on shadow boxing and what have you, so I always had a bit of an interest in growing up watching boxing, and then I bumped into Fred Gummerson when I was about eight in the street, and uh, he just said, you're old enough now, get in gym, and I've been in gym ever since. Craig was training at Lowestoft Amateur Boxing Club as a kid, so high, I can't remember how old he was then or even how long ago it was, it's probably, I don't know, it might be 12 or 13 years ago now I should imagine, so, some, something like that, so he was, uh, he was a junior ABA boxer. Like my parents, to be honest, were like, thought I'd just be any normal kid when you're just like in and out, you know what I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. flashing the pan type thing, but I sort of stuck at it, it's just, I enjoyed it. I boxed for England as an amateur, national finals. Out of the blue, Craig just come and knocked on the door one day, uh, completely out of the blue really, and uh, said, uh, you know, want to come and do a bit of training. So we, we, we had a chat and we established some, because uh, like I say, it had been a bit, the way I saw it, things for him had been a bit fragmented yeah. over a period of time, over quite a long period of time really. Um, I knew what I wanted to do in the sport, so we had a chat, sat down and laid down some, you know, what he wanted, what I wanted, and those two things seem to be the same. Here we are now. I think I matured as a person, obviously the years out of the early twenties, but I was watching TV and I was seeing people that I'd, I'd seen in amateur scene and I, like no disrespect to anybody, I thought I can beat some of these and the people I've fought as amateurs and beaten and, and they're doing well and I'm thinking well why am I sat on the sofa watching them, you only get one line, you know, so. Professional boxing when you're an amateur and you start out so young, it, it, it is like, um, it's up there like on a pedestal, you know, so it's like, it's an honour when you're a professional boxer and you get your laminate and what have you, but I always just wanted, I, like, when I teamed up with Matt and Graham, I just said I just want a fair crack and just achieve as much as possible. If I, if I can only get to a certain level, then at least I've tried and God willing I can push on and push on but at least I've given it everything and achieved everything I can. You've got 10 rounds. It's, it's not a sprint, four rounds, a little bit of a sprint. I think, um, I always said I thought I'd be better over the longer rounds, just sort of settle a little bit, and be a little bit more methodical and think about things and I enjoy it doing more rounds, you know? And, Training camp on that one, brilliant. Nothing, just getting on the scales and same as when you when you weigh in on the day, you want to be on your way. That's all you think about it. You check yourself, keep keep a pair of scales in, you're checking your weight all the time, make sure you're there, you know, try and be professional. I felt good. I, I felt like I'd earned, earned the right to be there. I boxed for a long time, trained for a long time, and it just felt good. It's what I like, you know. It's, it's a good
good feeling. Obviously, you get butterflies, you're a fighter. But I was there and I listened to the music and it was, felt good, we warmed up, felt sharp. From a trainer's point of view, the main thing is that his commitment to training is second to none. You know, if I want him in the gym at half five in the morning, I'll be there at half five in the morning or whatever. You know, he turns up, you never. He's not an excuse maker, and, that, uh, and you know that, that that's what you want. Um, and you've got to get the balance between. You, you've got to get this right. You've got to have you know serious when it's serious, which is most of the time. But you've got to have a bit of a laugh and a bit of banter there as well. He's a good guy to have around, Jim.